Well, today, um, uh, I thought we would start out and just kind of start this, you know, this, this new sort of era for, uh, for our church. And I, I wanted to talk to you today uh, about being courageous, about being strong and courageous. Uh, when, when, you know, when you look at Scripture, God so often it tells his people, be strong and courageous, strong and courageous. And you know, for any task that he's given us, he, he equips us, but then he asks us to be strong and courageous in him. So I just want to start out this morning, just kind of you know, maybe check, check out, see, see where we're at today. How many of you would like to be more courageous? Anybody? Okay, some of you need to be courageous enough to raise your hands. I get that. Um, so I, I'm with you there. But um, listen, you know, where, where does courage come from? Because I started thinking about this. Where does courage come from? I never really considered that before. You know, so, some people, they say you need to summon up your courage, right? So, you know, like it comes from inside you somehow. And, and other people, they think that courage is kind of innate, like you're, you're born with it. Some people, they, oh, they must just be more courageous than other people. Um, when I was a kid, you might have a hard time believing this, but I was really shy. And I was, I always wondered, like, how could the other people, they just look so courageous and they look so confident, you know, how do they do that? Why, why can't I be like that? But it turns out that courage doesn't come from the place that most of us think it does. I, I was looking at a, a, a major study that researchers did on where does courage come from. And it turns out it's not something that we're born with. And the, the research actually shows that courageous people aren't any less afraid than any of the rest of us. In fact, what the researchers found is that Courageous people are courageous because of how they handle fear. Courageous people actually lean into the things that make them afraid. Isn't that interesting? They, they, they emphasize their own vulnerability, and then they deal with the thing they're afraid of. And, and, and when I saw that, I saw this research, I, I just, it just reminded me yet again of why I love God's Word, the, the Bible, so much. Um, and, and, you know, why I find it to be so reliable. Um, somebody one, one time said that all truth is God's truth. And, and I, as I think about that, you know, what that means is that everything that's good and that's true actually comes from God. Isn't that right? I mean, if it's good and it's true, we, we know it comes from God. We actually know that from Scripture, too. You know, all, all good things come from the Father of lights. But as I was looking at this, I, I saw that... Um, you know, when, when we're looking at, um, at what makes people courageous, it's you know, how people handle their fear. And, and I was thinking about a biblical example of that. I want to just show you an example. Um, you know, and it's not that we need to uh, kind of you know, uh, corroborate the Bible with research, but it's kind of cool when it happens. Right, like that, you know, God, you made that, and we're, we're just discovering this now through research. Uh, I want to share an example that happened a long time ago, thousands of years ago, um, long before researchers told us how courage works. And what you're going to see today is that if you're a Christian, you have a super powerful weapon that helps you to remain courageous even in the middle of really, really fearful situations. So let me just kind of set this up today. What was going on is... In the New Testament, in the Gospel of Matthew, um, Jesus just learned that his, his cousin, John the Baptist, was, was killed by the king. He was beheaded by the king. Jesus decides he wants to get away, and he's going to go into, uh, kind of get away from everybody, go pray. And here's what happens. Everybody saw him going, and they're like, we should follow that guy. So he tries to get away to pray, and turns out a big crowd just follows him. So he, he doesn't get away. Some of you moms and dads know what this is like, right? You're like, I just want to get away. And you look behind you and you're like, oh, the kids are there. Um, but that's what happens. So there are, there's this huge crowd of people out in the, basically out in the wilderness. And comes to the end of the day, they're getting hungry. And, and, and you kind of know what happens next. If you've ever been around Sunday school, you know there's going to be this, this massive miracle where this crowd of 5,000 men, they, they, with women and children, probably six or 7,000 people, this massive crowd gets fed. And what's significant about this miracle is, is the effect it had on the disciples. Because here's the thing, the disciples had seen Jesus heal people. They'd seen him heal a leper. They'd seen him heal a paralyzed man. The disciples had been sent out by Jesus. They had healed people in Jesus' name uh, themselves. But with this miracle of feeding 
thousands and thousands of people, Jesus gave the disciples an opportunity to participate. I don't know if you remember this, but this is what happened. Jesus, the disciples come to Jesus, they say, Jesus, people are hungry. And Jesus said, okay, that sounds logical. Why don't you feed them? And the disciples go, wait a minute, uh, uh, listen, all we have, we, we found this one kid who's got like a filet of fish sandwich. That's all we've got, right? He's just like, got some fish and bread, and how can we feed this crowd with that? And Jesus said, okay, then bring it to me. Bring it to me. And he blesses it. He says, pass it out. And, and miraculously, right, this is a miracle. It, it, it doesn't end. They keep on passing and passing and passing and there are leftovers, right? There's 12 baskets of leftovers, which I always thought was a nice touch, 12 for maybe each one of the, the disciples. Not quite sure, but anyway. And the disciples get fed too, right? We sometimes miss that, which means this time they were the recipients of the miracle for maybe the first time. They, they had been around miracles before, but this time they received the miracle. So you can just kind of imagine. So... Dinner time comes, everyone gets fed, people start to go back to their homes, and the disciples are still thinking about this miracle that they got to participate in, still processing the miracle. And then here's what happens next, according to Matthew 14. Check this out. It says, Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. He, he sends them off in the Sea of Galilee, goes to the, the next place they're going where Jesus is going to preach. He finally is thinking to, you know, to himself, I get to be by myself, right? Like I'm going to send you guys off. And after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. That was the original reason he came out. It says, later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake, miracle number two, within just a few hours, right? When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, here it is, he immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And what I want you to see today from this account is that its connection to Jesus is the key to courage. Connection to Jesus is the key to courage. I, I imagine there are other reasons why people can be courageous, but for followers of Jesus Christ, it's that Jesus is the key to our courage. And I don't want us to miss this today because the disciples, even though they had seen a miracle, even though they had participated in this miracle, they were afraid when they saw him on the lake. I don't know, like, who wouldn't be, right? I'm pretty sure I'd be right there with them. I'm pretty sure most of us be right there with them. But Jesus' response to their fear, check it out, was, take courage. It, it is I. And it's kind of a tough translation of, of the Greek, from the Greek to English. But it, take courage actually means receive encouragement. It means receive encouragement because I'm here, is what Jesus said. Take courage, it's I. And it turns out Jesus actually said take courage a lot to, to many people. He said it to a man that, who was paralyzed, who he healed. He, he said it to a woman who had a, a blood disorder for many, many years before he healed her. He said it to a blind man, a man blind from birth, before he healed him. Take courage. He said it to the disciples in the upper room. He said it to the apostle Paul when he met him on the road to Damascus. And Jesus is recorded as saying, don't be afraid, like 10 more times in Scripture. It's me. He says, it's me. Let me be your source of courage. I think some of us, even Christians, we, we might hear this and we say, yeah, I, okay, I, I get it, but here's the thing about me. I don't really have much courage, right? Like I, I try to follow Jesus, but it turns out I'm fearful of a lot of things. 
Uh, the thought of illness scares me. Uh, death scares me. Politics scares me, right? Getting older scares me. Uh, world events scare me. That, so does that mean I'm not a good follower of Jesus? And if you're wondering that today, maybe you can take some comfort in the fact that I think a lot of us, maybe we're not too different from Peter. Because look at what happened in this account. Peter wasn't confident in this situation in the middle of the lake, in the middle of the night. Peter's along with those other disciples, and he's scared, he's tired, he, he's tapped out, just like they all are. But I think you don't have to read too much into it to, to think, you know, Peter, Peter is the one who remembers the miracle from just a few hours ago. I think maybe Peter is saying, Jesus, since you did that, do you maybe want me to come out on the water to you? And Jesus said, come on out. And I think a lot of us are like Peter in, in, in the way we follow Jesus. We, we start out, many of us, with courage in Christ. You might remember a time, in fact, when your family wasn't so thrilled with you following Jesus Christ. Or, or maybe you're a student and, and, and kids have made fun of you for following Jesus. Maybe you've lost some relationships, some of you, because of your faith in Christ. But you leaned into your relationship with him. And you followed Jesus courageously. And, and just like that, you know, Peter was following Jesus courageously too. The, the storm was scary, right? Somebody walking out on the lake in the middle of the night, that's scary. The rest of the disciples kind of freaking out behind you, that's scary stuff. But courageous people, they're, they're vulnerable and, and, and they, don't, they don't try to be fearless on their own, right? And that was Peter too. He knew he couldn't walk on the water without Jesus' help. So he asked Jesus, should I come to you? And Peter wasn't self-confident. If you look at what happened, he was Jesus-confident, right? He knew that that's what was needed to walk onto the water. So Peter locked on to Jesus. He, he connected to Jesus. And Peter stepped out of that boat. And I, honestly, have you ever thought about what that must have been like? Like I've been trying to imagine just, just the sensation today. Like you just hoist yourself over that boat and what's, what does the first step feel like? Like, wow, it, there's something there, right? It's wet, but there's something there. I, I don't know what it felt like, but kind of trying to imagine. I'm sure he's like, I can't believe this is happening. This is kind of crazy. But remember, before we get too excited about what was happening, we're like Peter and Peter's like us. Because all of a sudden something happened to Peter. And it happens to us too. We start out well. We start out courageous. But what we read from Matthew's account is this is what happened to Peter. Look at that. This is what happened to Peter. When he saw the wind, when he saw the wind, don't miss it, when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink cried out, Lord, save me. Check this out. When, when, when Peter saw the wind, he began to sink. Right In, in the beginning, and, and for a while, all Peter was doing was seeing Jesus. Right? He, he kept his eyes focused on Jesus. And when he did that, he was courageous. Didn't matter what was going on around him. He was courageous. And most of us are like that too in the beginning. We start out walking with Jesus with a lot of courage, but then something happens. We can take our attention off of him. In fact, something can happen, and, and it, it can get to the point where we don't even pay that much attention to him anymore. We can begin to focus more and more of our attention on what's going on around us, whatever it might be. And just like Peter, we begin to see the wind. We begin to see the bad stuff going on around us, and pretty soon it can be, that's all we see. And our confidence begins to sink, and that's what happened to Peter. He began to look at his surroundings more and Jesus less, and he began to sink along with his courage. I find that to be true in my own life. Maybe you do as well. I, I find, definitely find that as my prayer life goes, as my time in God's word goes, so goes my courage. 
Anybody with me? Do you notice a difference the more time you spend with Jesus Christ? If I'm lacking confidence, it's usually because I'm lacking time with Jesus. I saw the other day, I saw a report that said that nearly half of us get our news from social media. That doesn't horrify you, it should. Um, (laughs) Turns out that those of us who are on Facebook believe more theories and maybe political propaganda than the average person, right? I made the mistake of looking at somebody's Facebook post of the day, like, you know, 10 of them, it was like, politics scary, 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 politics scary. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a little horrifying, um, but, you know, let me just tell you something. Here, here's, here's an application for us, for each and every one of us. It Do- doesn't matter kind of where, you, where you're at in life or even on the political spectrum. If you've got your eyes on Facebook and on CNN and on Fox News, more than you've got your eyes on Jesus Christ, I can guarantee you you're going to be scared. You're, you're going to be anxious. You're going to be lacking in courage. If we spend more time on social media than in God's word, we're going to be scared, anxious, and lacking courage because it's connection to Jesus that is the key to courage. And so, listen, if, if just like Peter, you're feeling kind of anxious about a lot of things going on, I, I would just say, you know, you might, you might, as you sort of add up what you do during the day, you might just find that you're putting more emphasis on your surroundings than you are on your Savior. Because if we're going to be courageous, we've got to get our eyes back on Jesus He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. He's the author and the source of our faith. When we place our attention elsewhere, we always kind of have that sinking feeling. Listen, why did Jesus come to earth? Why why did he give his life? I'm pretty sure it wasn't for us to be fearful. Right? He, he came to earth. He gave his life. He rose from the dead to give us life. And not just life, life more abundantly. When when Peter was sinking, he cried out, Lord, save me. And it says immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and he caught him. So as we wrap up today, if you're not experiencing today the abundant life that Jesus has for you, can I just ask you to consider and, and, and maybe even push you a little further than that. Can I ask you to, to do something this week? Can I ask you to double down on your connection to Jesus? To double down on your relationship with him? I don't think it's any, it, it, it's, it's not a, a coincidence that, that one time in front of a crowd, here's what Peter said. Peter said this to a crowd. He said, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Where did he get that from? Certainly got it from the Old Testament prophets. He also got it from the fact that when he called on Jesus' name, Jesus saved him. If you've been focusing on something that's been dragging you down, sapping your courage, Go to Jesus and say, Lord, save me. And then refocus on him. Listen, I, I've been inspired this week. I, I, I've, even been, I've been thinking about my, about my own life, my own level of courage and where I spend my time. And honestly, I, I'm going to put the news away for a while. I, I'm going to put social media away for a while. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refocus my focus, put more of my attention on Jesus. Because that's where courage comes from. Jesus came to earth to sacrifice his life for you so that you and I could have an abundant life and amazing courage as we stay connected to him.